My name is Jennifer. This is Metatron is speaking. Welcome, everybody. We're going to talk about guilt today. Um, and, we're, and we're just going to, well, let's start off talking about emotions in general, because all emotions have a specific vibration. And I'm actually going to show you a grid, show you a graph, I should say. And on this graph, you'll see different colors. At the very bottom, we have red. At the very bottom of this graph that is measuring the frequency of emotions, the lowest vibrating emotions, at the very bottom we have shame, and then slightly up from that we have guilt, apathy, and grief. So those are the very lowest vibrations that we can have. So let's talk a little bit about that because a lot of people have issues with feeling guilty over things and it's not a beneficial emotion. So let's dig into it a little bit deeper. So when you feel guilt, you are judging yourself. You are telling yourself, I should have done this, or I should not have done this, or I should have said this, or I should not have said this. You are passing judgment on yourself and you are ruling, you are deciding that you came up short and that you should be punished. This is what Metatron has to say about it. Dear one, don't you know that all souls make mistakes, even God? There is no shame in being wrong. There is no shame in making a choice that ends poorly. This isn't just human nature. This is soul nature. How else will you learn what is truly important to you? How else can you become more conscious of the impact that you have on others? Mistakes and poor judgment must happen. Learn the lesson from the moment. Make amends. But then... Let the rest go. Why do you judge yourself so? Not even God judges you. Forgive yourself for being imperfect. Forgive yourself for being just like everyone else. Let go of perfection. It does not exist. Perfection is a snare to distract you from the beauty of wholeness. Real perfection is the depth of both dark and light in a soul. That is the end of his message. So let's talk about when we make mistakes. When we mess up something, when we make a mistake, what are we supposed to do? Because our that gut reaction is to just feel guilty about it. Well, that's a useless emotion, right? So how should we be focused on behaving? So we're going to go through four steps. This is self-forgiveness in four steps. So step number one, take responsibility for your actions. I'm going to show you a picture that I thought was hilarious. So it's accountability 101. And it gives, after, you know, you've made a mistake and now you have the first thing that comes out of your mouth after you make the mistake, I meant well. Eh -eh, nope, that's, that's not accountability. That was not my intent. Eh -eh, no, also not accountability. The correct response based on this picture is, I broke the egg. I broke the egg. I messed up. I said this thing. I did this thing. So, number one, take responsibility. Number two, express remorse and regret without letting it transform into guilt. So, what you want to do for this one, and this is assuming this is heartfelt for you, so expressing remorse and regret, that's 
that's you apologizing. That's you saying, I am so sorry I broke your egg. I think it's important to be very specific about what you're sorry about and not do a generalized apology. I think being specific makes it more genuine and valuable to the person you're giving it to. So take responsibility, apologize. Step number three, commit to making amends for any harm you caused. So how you can do this, um, assuming you can, assuming the person that you have um, made the error against can, you know, talk back to you and whatnot, you can ask them, how can I make this right for you? What can I do to make this right again? So that is the two-step process in the apology, right? You make the mistake, you say, I made the mistake. The second part is, I'm sorry I made that mistake. Third part is, what can I do for you to make this mistake better? And so that's you showing that person that you're not just saying an apology, you actually are going to put some action behind it and you care about their feelings and you want to know how it'll be better for them. Because you could just guess what might make it better for them. You might be like, oh, it's it's my wife. I'm just going to bring her flowers. Well, maybe your wife doesn't want flowers. Maybe your wife wants you to, I don't know, sit down and talk about it. Or maybe she wants you to do something else that makes the situation right again. Number four. This is This is the gold right here. This is what we came for. Number four. Practice self-acceptance and trust yourself to do better in the future. Practice self-acceptance and trust yourself to do better in the future. So what does that really mean? It means you let it go. That's it. You apologized. You took ownership for it. You made amends in whatever way you could make amends to make that right again. That's it. You're done. You've done everything that you humanly need to do. Now you got to let it go. And that's going to be the hard part is that step four, right? Because step four is like, ooh, but I really shouldn't have done that. You know, step four wants to, <laughs> step four, that phase afterwards wants to still ruminate on it. But we need to stop. And just consciously let it go. Be like, nope. I did what I needed to do. I'm going to release this now. I don't need this anymore. I'm done with this. So I worked with a brand new archangel. I worked with Archangel Zadkiel. Um, he worked with me on making a crystal grid. He is the archangel of many things. Um, the reason he is working with me, or he did work with me on the crystal grid, is because he is the archangel of forgiveness and mercy. And he helped me select crystals for a crystal grid to help us forgive and have mercy for ourselves. So I'm going to go ahead and show you what we put together. Okay, so this is our guilt crystal grid. I'm going to tell you a little bit about it just so you can have a chance to look at the grid and absorb the energies. It's already been activated by Metatron. So in the center we have a calcite sphere. And calcite is helping us in this case with changing perspective. And it just assists in general with making changes. These three kind of blocks that you see here are also calcite. Um, they're, when it's in this form, it's normally referred to as optical calcite because of how clear it is. You'll oftentimes find um, rainbows on the inside of it. And sometimes it's also referred to as Iceland spar. So we have those. We have the bright pink quartz points for activating heart energy, which is needed to forgive yourself. We have 
quartz icosahedrons to amplify the energy. We have rhodonite merkabas, and these are specifically to encourage self-forgiveness, as is the snowflake obsidian used specifically to encourage self-forgiveness. We have Shiva eyes on here, which is actually a shell, and they're actually really amazing if you ever want to look into that in particular, but in this case we're going to be using it for awakening the sense of adventure and change. And the change is going to be us responding differently when we have a situation where we make a mistake and we feel guilt and we want to go into that cycle. We're not going to do it. We're going to change. We're going to do the four steps. We're going to let it go at the end. We have pink halite, which is here for nurturing and self-love. And that is everybody on here. I have two Amanda Ellis sprays that I'm going to be using. The first one is, I don't know if you can see that, it's Rose Inner Child. So this is important because a lot of times, there we go, a lot of times when we have unconscious behavior that we're really stuck in the pattern, it originates sometimes in our childhood, sometimes it originates in a past life, but in the case of originating in childhood, this inner child spray is perfect in order to soothe the inner child and just be able to make a change instead of unconsciously staying stuck in that pattern. The other Amanda Ellis spray I'll be using, you probably can't read that at all. It says Sapphire Divine Peace Energy Spray. And I'll put the names of these in the description for everybody in case you want it. Yeah. And Divine Peace is perfect for this because you know, when you're, you're stuck in a cycle of thought, you're not at peace. When you're judging yourself, you're not at peace. So, perfect sprays for this grid. I hope you've kind of taken a couple deep breaths and kind of just absorb all of that in. I'm going to put a picture of this grid on my website, orangelightenergy.com. So if you ever want to look at it, if you ever want to download it, it will be available for you all the time there. Until next time, everybody. See you later. Bye-bye.